we praise Him and we glorify Him and we ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith of Sahih Bukhari. Also in Sahih Muslim. So when the same hadith is to be found both in Bukhari and Muslim, we say, agreed upon by the two. Muttafaqun Ali. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam said that Nabuwa or Prophethood is comprised of 46 different parts. He says, after me, nothing remains of Prophethood or Nabuwa except one part. And that is Ru'ya Sadiqa and Ru'ya Saliha. A Ru'ya is something which the heart sees. It is sometimes translated in English as vision. <coughs> Sometimes the heart sees something while we are awake and sometimes the heart sees something when we are asleep. And that is called a dream. When that which the heart sees has come from Allah and through it knowledge is communicated to us then that's a ru'ya sadika or a true dream or a true vision and ru'ya saliha righteous dream or righteous vision and this is the last remaining part of Namuwa or Prophethood in the world today. <coughs> it now forces us to ask a question. If we still have a part of Prophethood with us in the world today, how come nobody teaches the subject? How come nobody pays attention to the subject? This is the part of prophethood. This is the last part of prophethood. Number one in the world. I call it the forgotten branch of knowledge. The Prophet also said, and the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, again, when the last hour approaches, the dreams and visions of a believer, the one who has faith, would seldom be uh, false, would almost invariably be true. So one of the signs by which we can tell whether or not we have faith in our heart, whether or not we are in a state in which our Lord is pleased with us, is whether or not we get good dreams and true dreams and good visions and true visions. Having said that, <coughs> this 
We now give an example of a true dream or a true vision. Last night I saw my neighbor's house on fire. And this morning, oh, alaykum at 10 o'clock, my neighbor's house caught fire. We are talking about a true dream for a true vision, an example. And we say that this is knowledge which comes from Allah. We said that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, the prophethood is comprised of any parts. How many? How many? How many? <laughs> Prophethood is comprised of how many parts? Two parts. Forty-six parts. Two. Two parts. So you had dinner before coming? <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Prophethood is comprised of forty-six different parts. <laughs> After me, said the Prophet, yes. salatu was salam, nothing remains of prophethood in the world except one part. And that one part is Ru'ya Salika and Ru'ya Saliha, good dreams and good visions, true dreams and true visions. And this hadith is to be found where? Bukhari. Bukhari. And Muslim. And when it is found in both Bukhari and Muslim, what do we say of that hadith? Muttafakun Ali. Muttafakun Ali. Not strange, some strange thing connected with a species of durian. No. <laughs> And he means both Bukhari and Muslim agreed. The Prophet also said that when the last hour approaches, the dreams of a believer would seldom fail to come true. No to the word. So if we if we never get true dreams or good dreams at this age, at this age, this is a wake up call for us that we do not as yet have enough faith in the heart. Good. We then try to give you an example of a true dream or vision in which knowledge comes from Allah. Last night I saw in a dream or vision my neighbor's house on fire, burning down. That was last night and this morning at 10 o'clock my neighbor's house caught fire. And in two hours' time, the whole thing was burnt down. Question. How can I see last night something which did not occur until this morning? I'm going to stop now. Let me hear your views. Because we hope we have the whole night ahead of us now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? How could I see last night something which occurred only today? Because for our last time is uh, different than for us. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we can show us the future. Mm -hmm. we, would, uh, we don't know how, but we can. 
Okay. So this alright, what about Ali? Brother Muhammad, your turn coming up this yes. time. <laughs> no. Okay, Brother Muhammad. Oh, you want me to ask the ladies first? Ladies first. I'm buying some time. Okay. <laughs> yes. What's yeah. You know when you see, doesn't your soul go to heaven? It's like your soul has its own journey to heaven. Or the soul can leave the body, and the soul can travel, and the soul saw the fire. Hmm? The soul saw the fire. Okay. Does anyone want to add anything? Deja vu. Huh? Deja vu. He's a French person. Yeah. French. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> anyone else? It's possible because Allah choose a certain person, people to have that vision, and you know, only for those people who have faith. So He give that. It, I don't know how to explain, but something mm. like that. Um, okay. Knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Can I? <laughs> yeah, you've, you've, you've touched upon the uh, the, the faith and the person, and that's very important. So if your faith is so great in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why do that actually give you that knowledge and you know, the access to that knowledge? There is a surah of the Quran which is called Surah al Ma'arif in which it begins with this statement that Allah causes affairs, al-amr, to rise and to descend, <laughs> to rise and to descend. In other words, when Allah creates an event, He says, Kun, Kun, and it comes into being. But Surah Al-Ma'arish tells us that when it comes into being, it then has to travel minasamawati ilal ab. It has to travel through different worlds of space and time until it uh, un unfolds in this world. And so, the fire, listen carefully, the fire was created. And the fire existed before it occurred. <coughs> this is a branch of knowledge which forms a part of philosophy which is called metaphysics. And this is our metaphysics in Islam. <laughs> that the fire was created and the fire existed before it occurred. In other words, it is there waiting to happen. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, uh, excuse me, it is a surah of the Quran called Surah Al Jinn. <laughs> and in Surah Al Jinn, we are told now why President Reagan acted the way he used to do. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. <laughs> uh, you American, are you? No. We don't have any Americans here. Ronald Reagan, <laughs> the cowboy president. <laughs> the cowboy president. 
the angels are given the instructions hmm, of what to do. Allah creates it, but the angels have to cause it to happen. So the angels discuss among themselves things that have to be done. And there is a word in English called eavesdropping. <laughs> you go behind the wall and you listen. Eavesdropping. So the Quran says that the jinn eavesdrop on the angels and get to know some of the things that are to occur. Yes. And those jinn who are shayateen will now communicate that to the coffee cup people. You know the coffee cup people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the people who read the stars and uh, they read your hands. Uh, you have them in Brunei? Mm. Yeah. 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 And when, and when they read your hands, and they read the coffee cup, and they read the stars and so on, sometimes it's true. What they say is true. Okay? The Hindus are sunk in this. A Hindu will not have a marriage ceremony. He will start construction of a house <coughs> until he's told the stars are in alignment and this is good day and so on. And Israel is not going to launch a war against Iran on the basis of a military calculation. No! The, the rabbis have to tell the government, government when is the good day to start the <laughs> So. The rabbi is told 2012 is a good time. <laughs> so you can be fairly confident that Israel is not going to launch the war in November or in December. But come January, you can hmm? And this is how we have the fortune tellers and the soothsayers and so on. But the information that they convey is obtained immorally. You don't eavesdrop on a husband and wife talking in the bedroom and put that information in your PhD thesis. <laughs> 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 that, is not, that is not validly obtained. And this is why, and also, some of it is false. Some of it is false. Allah did not intend that you should get that information. No. It's private information. But since the jinn went and eavesdropped, the jinn got it. So Ronald Reagan had this woman in the White House. And this woman used to inform him, the soothsayer in the White House, about how the US government should be run. The Prophet said, Man atta ha'raf. فَسَأَلَهُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ لَمْ يُقْبَلْ لَهُ صَلَاةً عَقْبَعِينَ لَيْلًا Whosoever meets such a person, fortune teller, so to say, Abraham, and questions him about things to happen, his salat would not be accepted for 40 days. So the answer to the question is that the event was already created, the fire. When Allah said, Kun, fire Kun. And that fire now has to materialize. And the angels are the ones who have to transport it. <coughs> and the angels take it from Sama to Sama. How many Samas are there? How many Sama ones? Seven. That's right, seven. <coughs> so the fire has to pass through all seven samavad before it occurs in this world. 
The Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam that there is an angel who is appointed as the angel of dreams and visions. And that angel is the one who communicates to you in a dream or a vision. The event which already exists but has not as yet occurred. This is our way of proving indisputable proof of the existence of al ghaib <coughs> the unseen world. Modern Western arrogant civilization, which considers itself to be all-knowing. And we who don't belong to that civilization, who have another world of knowledge, we are the natives. We have to be civilized by them. They don't accept that knowledge could come from an unseen world. No. They do not accept that knowledge can come from an unseen world. And so we challenge them. Here's the challenge. Explain to us the phenomenon of a true dream. Sigmund Freud couldn't do it. What Sigmund Freud did was to explain those dreams which originate in your own self. And so he created a new branch of knowledge which in psychology is now known as psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis. Now you can understand how important is a true dream or a true vision. Because knowledge can be communicated to us directly from Allah through the agency of angels as a gift from Allah to a servant of Allah. When that knowledge is communicated, <coughs> when I got it last night, and then at midnight I went to my neighbors and told them, I saw your house on fire. I was asleep and I saw your house on fire. <coughs> they don't have to accept that information. No. They can, if they choose, reject it. Because it's not the Qur'an. It's not the word of Allah. So knowledge which comes through the medium of true dreams or true visions does not qualify as knowledge which is incumbent upon all of mankind to accept. No. You have the choice. You want to accept, you can. And if you don't want to, you don't have to accept it. Okay? One more thing before we proceed. Amongst the dreams which come from Allah, the good dreams and the true dreams, which one would you think would qualify as the best dream of all? And don't tell me the girl you're going to get married to. Meeting with the Prophet? That's right. Correct. Here's another bachelor here with a star, mashallah. <laughs> the best dream you could possibly have is a dream of Nabi Muhammad <laughs> And then after that, dreams of the prophets. And then after that, dreams of the Malaika, the angels. And after that, dreams of the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu And after that, dreams of your dead parents, who are believers, Muslims. These are the best dreams you can have. 
The Prophet said, "Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam, Man Raani, Fakad Ra Al Haq." Whoever sees me has truly seen me. And then he added, "For Shaitan cannot take my form." Now, only those who were alive at that time and who actually saw the Prophet himself with their own eyes, because it was prohibited to make any drawing of him, portraits. Prohibited. Only they, if they see him in a dream, can confirm. I have in fact seen him truly in a dream. After that generation, to this day, if you see him in a dream. And if you have the consciousness in your heart that this is indeed the prophet, the answer is: it is possible that it was truly the prophet, and it was also possible that someone is taking you for a ride. Remember Saddam Hussein? Remember he said the prophet came to him. And told him point the scalp missiles. Then the prophet is himself guiding Saddam Hussein, <laughs> telling him which way to point the scalp missiles. Okay. Saddam Hussein will not end up the way he did. All right. We have a scholar of Islam in Pakistan today. Is making a name for himself. His popularity is increasing. The followers are increasing in large numbers, and uh, he's had a large number of dreams of the Prophet, who told him very strange things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, without going any further into the subject, if you had a dream of the Prophet and Islam. And there was a consciousness in your heart that this is indeed the Prophet, Then remember, yes, it is possible that you had a true dream, but also it is possible that you have been taken for a ride. So be careful with it. Okay. Dreams are of three kinds, said the Prophet, There are two dreams which come from Allah, mm. and they are a gift from Allah. And when you wake up from your sleep, if you had a good dream or a true dream, He said you must perform two rakat salat nafil to give thanks to Allah and give some charities. And then he said that dreams also come from shaitan. <coughs> and these are known as nightmares. For example, <coughs> Suraya had a dream. She was walking on the road. And she saw some boys playing football. And when she looked carefully, she got it in her head. <laughs> she was playing football with her head. <laughs> so when Suraya woke up from that dream, from that sleep, she's wet and with perspiration. This was the ultimate nightmare. My head on the ground, and Shaitan is laughing because his intention was to cause her distress. Nightmare. Well, this is a this is a nightmare that will cause you to laugh. But the other one won't cause you to laugh at all. Allah bless you, the wonderful wife, Masha Allah. 
She's a very beautiful girl. She's a very pious girl. She's an obedient wife. She's modest. She's chaste. And you have a happy marriage. So Shaitan comes along and he shows you a dream in which you see your wife on the beach on a moonlight night walking hand in hand with a boyfriend. You wake up in the morning and if you see your face if you look in a mirror, you're angry. And when you look at your wife, she's scared to look at you. What's happened to him? Huh? And you said to you know what I saw last night? What <laughs> <laughs> think she's innocent? She is innocent. And then you tell her what you saw. Two weeks later, Shaitan strikes again. And on the second dream, you see her in his arms. And this time you wake up and you take your fist and you're pounding against the wall of the bedroom. What's going on here? And then six months later, of course, the divorce takes place. Because you've broken her heart. She no longer can take it anymore that you are suspecting her of being unfaithful to you when she is innocent. And when the divorce takes place, Shaitan <laughs> rubs his hands and he says, Mission, accomplish you dumb dumb, mission accomplish. So the Prophet said, when you have a dream from Shaitan, a nightmare. When you wake up from your sleep, turn your head to your left shoulder and spit three times. This is called the psychology of religion. Without saliva necessarily leaving your mouth, spit three times. And then do not narrate the dream to anyone, not even to your grandmother. Do not narrate the dream to anyone. You listening? Shreya, do not narrate the dream to anyone. And he said, if you do that, the dream will not take roots, it will fade away. But if you tell her the dream, then it begins to take roots and then Shaitan will come again. And then you tell her the next dream, it goes off further. And then Shaitan will come again. He also said, if after you've had a nightmare and you wake up and you want to go back to sleep, what should you do? Uh, change your side. Yes. If you were sleeping on your right side, change your side. Sleep on your left side. Okay. Change the side on which you are sleeping. But then finally you have the third kind of dreams, which are dreams from your own nafs. A human being is comprised of jism or badan. Badan, which is the physical body. And the Quran speaks about the second thing, وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ So the human being also has a ruh, ruh. But the essential human being is not the badan, because this is going to rot, disintegrate, decay. The human, the essential human being is not the ruh. Because the ruh doesn't have to answer to Allah. 
the roof is not going to be rewarded with Jannah or punished with Jahannam. No. The essential human being is the nafs. The English equivalent for nafs would be, help me somebody. Desire. 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 Did I hear correctly? Desire? The nafs is the self. S E L F. Sometimes also called the soul. The ruh is the spirit and the badan is the body. The nafs is what we call I. This is my book. This is my book. The word my refers to the self, the nafs. Anyone who can say I, I. Mashallah, I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> this is my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> University of Brunei appointed him as my bodyguard time I was after, last time. Anyone, anyone who can say I, I, I as yourself. Can angels say I? Okay, let me stop. <laughs> Can angels say I? Who wants the answer? No, they can't. All right. Well, no durian for any of you then. <laughs> he saw the angel on the ca in the cave of Hira. And the angel squeezed him. And the angel said, Ikka. And when the angel disappeared, he was shaken up. He was shaken up. And he was so shaken up, I said, I'm going home. I am heading home. So he's hurrying down the mountainside. And while hurrying down the mountainside, he saw the angel again. In the sky, I understand. Huge angel in the sky. And he looked up. And the angel said, I am Gabriel. And you are the messenger of Allah. I I'm Gabriel, and you are the messenger of Allah. That's the first time he ever knew that he was the messenger of Allah. So angels do have enough. Angels can say, I. What about the jinn? Can they say, I? Have you ever met a jinn? <laughs> Come on, somebody, where's the evidence? Confront, yes. <laughs> Confront, yes. Huh? Yes. I, I want to hear, I want to hear I. I am better than him. Yeah, Correct. I Correct. Mm. Correct. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me, please, why did you not? Make sense that when I ordered you to. <coughs> and he replied, Why should I? You see, I attended the University of Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> and they taught me logic at the University of Singapore. And you created me from fire, you created him from sleep. I am superior to him. That's what they taught me at the University of Singapore, the master logician. Eh? 
So angels can say I and jinn can say I. And human beings of course can say I. What about cattle? And donkeys and sheep and dogs? And what about trees? What about the rain? What about the sun? What about the moon? What about the clouds? What about the sea? What about the birds? What about the bees? Nothing else in the universe. Nothing else in the universe, okay, has nafs other than these three. So the nafs is the essential human being. And a dream can also come not from Allah, not from shaitan, but from your nafs. And this is where Western psychology excels. Sigmund Freud, uh, Adolf Adler, uh, Jung, J-U-N-G, Jung, I can't remember his first name, Franz Jung. These three men pioneered the branch of knowledge called, called psychoanalysis, where you can discover, you can diagnose human mental diseases from analyzing dreams. The dream can be an expression of something which is inside of you. Tell me who you are. Sorry, tell me your dreams and I'll tell you who you are. Sometimes a dream from the nafs comes as a as rahma from Allah to mend a broken heart. And therefore plays an important psychological function. The favorite example is the five-year-old girl. And she hears the music from the ice cream truck in the summertime. And all the other children living in that street all are running out to buy ice cream. So she asks mommy for some money. And mommy says, sorry, I don't have any money. So she stands up by the window and she watches all the other children <coughs> buying ice cream. And then she watches the ice cream truck drive away. And that little heart of hers is broken. An unfulfilled desire. An unfulfilled desire can affect your health when it's sufficiently strong. It can cause you to suffer ill health <coughs> and that can even cause you to die. So in the night while she was sleeping, ice cream truck came again and she asked mommy for money. And mommy gave her the money. And she ran down the street to the ice cream truck and she bought ice cream. And she came back home and she sat down and she ate and ate and ate with ice cream all over her face and ice cream all over her clothes. And when she woke up in the morning, that broken heart and be mended. Good. This is a very simple example which everybody can understand of the role and the function of a dream from your own nafs through which the nafs attempts to rebuild itself, to restore a state of normalcy.
You are hungry. No food. <laughs> and you go to sleep. Empty belly. And you might not be able to sleep in that state. <laughs> and then a dream comes along and you have a young boy. <laughs> Huh? And you have biryani, <laughs> <coughs> and you have all kinds of lovely food, and you eat to your heart's content. And because of that dream, you're not able to sleep, where otherwise you could not sleep. Here's another example of a dream in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the, the self to restore a state of normalcy of an unfulfilled desire being fulfilled in a dream. But sometimes a dream comes to tell you who you are. This is the self expressing itself. You had become a habitual liar. You lied and you lied and you lied so much until, until people said, if he tells me that the sun is shining, I won't believe him. I have to go outside and look in the sky. And if I see the sun shining, then I'll believe him. So this sort of tells too many lies. And then Islam came to you and you learnt that if there are lies on the lips, then truth cannot be in the heart. So you're now trying to correct your conduct. And you're making an effort to speak the truth. And then one day you said to yourself confidently, I have overcome that problem. I no longer tell lies. Guess what happened that night? <laughs> that night, you told the biggest lie of all. <laughs> In your dream. Why did that dream come? It came to tell you, you still have, my, still have more work to do. You see? And it came in a very private way to communicate to you. And so dreams which come from your own nafs have also an important role to play. Now then, it is not by accident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a number of dreams in the Qur'an. <coughs> not at all by accident. Which surah of the Qur'an has the most dreams? Yusuf. MashaAllah. Correct. <laughs> Yusuf. Mm -hmm. And if we want to study this subject now of dreams, <laughs> We better open the Qur'an and study those dreams in the Qur'an, okay? Which is the first dream in the Qur'an in terms of time, chronological? Which, which dream came first? It could be a dream pertaining to Prophet Muhammad He came last. He came last. What dream? The one where Yusuf has a dream and tells his father about uh, the sun and the planets. Uh, Good. Okay. Okay. Fine. And who can tell me a dream which came before that one? That's right. <coughs> Did you hear that? Okay, then that's good. They didn't hear you. <laughs> Which dream came before this one? You know, it's only the one, one week ago. One week ago. You are happy. One week. One week ago. One week ago. That's right. Ibrahim alayhi salam. So in a dream that he was slaughtering the dancer. Yeah. Ya Bunaya, inni ara fil manami anni azbahu. 
فَنْذُرْ مَا ذَتَرَى O my son, I have seen in my sleep, I had a vision, in which I am sacrificing you. Son, how do you respond? The son replied and said, يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful to get that kind of response from the son. It's not just that he's agreeing to it, it's more than that. Ma tukma. Ma tukma. He's recognizing that this is not a simple dream. This is not a dream from your nafs. <laughs> this is not a dream from shaitan. Straight to the needle. The son is able to recognize that this is a dream from Allah. You can't do that unless you have noor in the heart. Hardly anyone would ever give that answer that he gave. And he immediately recognized that this was a command from Allah communicated in a video. Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam put his son's head on the block. فَلَمَّا تَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ And he was ready to, he was prepared to sacrifice his son. I wish I knew what was in his heart. Because I believe we don't have the whole story here. <laughs> I believe we only have a fragment. Communicated to us in the Quran. And there's much more to this. Then Allah called out to him. Ya Ibrahim, by name, eh? Qad Sadaqta Ru'iya. So now we know it's a Ru'iya. It's a vision. And you have already fulfilled the vision. Meaning, the vision never required of you to actually <coughs> sacrifice your son. There was never any requirement, never any requirement for you to sacrifice your son. What the vision required of you has already been fulfilled. No need to proceed any further. What the vision required of you was to accept the sacrifice of your son. And when you accepted Ibrahim, then it will take this. It's now taking place. It's about to take place. That vision is about to take place now. <coughs> Communicated thousands of years ago. The Arab Spring is preparatory to the Arab Zaliha. It's coming now. That Arab Zaliha, that Arab slaughter, that destruction of the Arabs, is connected to this dream because the Prophet said alayhi salatu waslam the best of those who came from Ismail alayhi salam are the Kinana and the best of the Kinana are the Quraysh and the best of the Quraysh are Banu Hashim and I and the best of Banu Hashim. So there's a direct line between Ismail salam, and the Arabs. Direct line. Why did Allah ask Ibrahim salam, to agree to this? The sacrifice of Ismail alayhi salam. And therefore the sacrifice of the seed of Ismail 
Why did Allah ask for that? This is Ilmu Akhir Zawad. The sacrifice of the Arabs that is now coming is part and parcel of Allah's plan for the truth to eventually be triumphant for all writers. That in its arrogant, <coughs> bloodstained march, Israel and the Zionists believe they have to subdue the Arabs before Israel can become the ruling state in the world. And so the destruction of the Arabs is part and parcel of the plan of the Zionists for the Jal to rule the world. But Allah created Gog and Magog. It didn't happen by accident. In Sahih Muslim, I have created creatures of mine. This hadith is Sahih. This is Hadith al Qudsi. So powerful that only I can destroy them. Gog and Magog. And knowing Muhammad to Islam was asleep at the home of his wife Zainab. And he had a vision. And he woke up from his sleep and his face is flushed red. Whatever he saw was terrible, 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 terrible. Worse than if you see George Bush. <laughs> and when he woke up from his sleep, he said, Wailul lil Arab. Oh, unto the Arabs. <coughs> because of a great evil, which is now close. What did he see? What did he see? He didn't say, Wailul lil Malay or Pakistani. <laughs> he said Arabs. So Gog and Magog are going to? Attack the Arabs. He said, today a hole has been made in the Radha. Surah so Al-Kaf uses two words. He uses Sal, but then Zulkarnain used Radha, which is a well, which is a, a dam, the way you build a dam. He says, today a, a hole has been made in the Radha of Gog and Magar. Meaning, that the release of Gog and Magog from behind the barrier commences now. She then asked, <coughs> Oh, Zainab, radiallahu ta'ala anha, Anuhulika, Anuhulika, will we be destroyed? Passive tense, not active tense. Wafina salihun, and amongst us there are those who are righteous. <coughs> Will we, the Arabs, be destroyed by Gog and Magog, even though there are righteous people amongst us? He said, Naam. Yes. Ida kathural khas. When the scum prevails, and today, this comprehends. <laughs> oh yes. They have eyes and yet cannot see. They have ears and yet cannot hear. And they beat in the drums. Stopping NATO. So how many destroyed Gaddafis? Huh? <laughs> and brought down the Libyan government. A Libyan government, I don't have any need to praise Gaddafi. No, that's not my job. But Gaddafi, supported the Palestinian cause and opposed Israel. And NATO is a Zionist movement. And so now you have a, a Zionist state of Libya. Huh? And you facing that and tapping that? You're worse than cattle. When the scum prevails, the destruction of the Arabs would come. 
This is Ismail al Islam being sacrificed. I think that the attack on Iran, which Israel is big headedly pursuing, although the United States doesn't want it, which is probably going to take place in January, February, somewhere around there. The attack on Iran is going to lead to a chain of events taking place, which eventually will culminate with the destruction of the Arabs. My gosh, look at that. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah says, بَعَلَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْذَاهِرُ وَالْبَعْتِنِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ He is the first and he is the last. He is the outer which is manifest and he is the inner which is in. And he is truth. So if you want to study truth, you have to connect the first with the last. And this is the first. This dream, this vision. And this is the last. This is after Zaman. So here is a spectacular demonstration of a dream in the Quran, which came at the beginning to convey important information concerning the end. <clears throat> if I were to continue with the other dreams in the Quran and then continue to the dreams in the life of the Prophet and then continue to dreams of those who are not Prophets, you'll be here until Salat al <laughs> So I'll stop with this one dream in the Quran and then I'll go to one dream of the Prophet the, the Prophet a woman once came to him and said to him, O Messenger of Allah, terrible, 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 terrible thing has happened. What has happened? She said, I had a dream in which I saw a piece of your flesh, a lump of your flesh landed in my lap. And he started to smile. And the woman is almost in tears and he's, he's smiling. So she wants to know why is he smiling? He said, My daughter Fatima is going to give birth to a baby. You're going to hold a baby in your life. <laughs> this is the meaning of the dream. <laughs> Dreams have to be interpreted. And no university can teach that subject. No teacher can teach any student the interpretation of dreams. You can't study the subject from any book. Forget it. Allah chose someone. And having chose him, then taught him the knowledge of ta'wil al ahadith. Ta'wil means interpretation. A hadith here would mean the whole body of religious symbolism, communicated sometimes in dreams, sometimes otherwise. That has to be interpreted. <coughs> Dajjal will ride on a donkey. The donkey will travel how fast? Oh, you were not there last night. You were there. Where you dropped me home. <laughs> <laughs> the donkey will travel how fast? 
as fast as the Toyota Camry. <laughs> Salwa, oh you went out last night, you got away. You were there, Suraya. No, you got away. You were there. How fast? As fast as the clouds. As fast as the clouds. Oh. And the donkey will now be there stretched out wide. That wheel achalis means that you have to recognize that sometimes knowledge is conveyed through symbolism, religious symbolism. And you have to be able to recognize when it is symbolism. And then to be able to interpret the symbolism. So we recognize this to be religious symbolism, the flying donkey. And we say that the flying donkey is already here. It's the modern aircraft. Okay? Those who do not accept that any religious knowledge can come after the time of the Prophet and his companions. The book of knowledge is closed now. Knowledge comes only from the Quran, and from the Ahadith, and from the Aslaf, so they call Salafi, Aslaf. The book of knowledge is closed. So they're waiting for the flying donkey. <laughs> they're waiting for the flying donkey. But Nabi Muhammad immediately recognized that the lump of his flesh which landed on her lap with his grandchild. Dreams have to be interpreted and the only one who can interpret dreams is the one who receives that knowledge directly from Allah. Because I wrote a book on this subject and because for the last 15 or 20 years I have been lecturing and teaching this subject of dreams, people came to the conclusion that Imran Hussein can interpret dreams. <laughs> and if you read my emails, you have a good time. <laughs> you have a good time. Law emails with so many dreams, interesting dreams. <laughs> Check and you kindly interpret it. Huh? <laughs> no, I have not been blessed with the knowledge of the interpretation of dreams. No. And in fact, at this time, I'm scared. If someone is blessed with that knowledge, too bad for him. There'll be an avalanche of dreams coming to him <laughs> for interpretation. <laughs> he won't have time for anything but interpreting dreams. All right. If you want to have good dreams, then uh, take your dinner early. <laughs> The sunnah is to have dinner before the sunset or immediately after the sunset. Number two, when you have your dinner or your last meal, don't fill the plate with a mountain of food. No. Rather, let your last meal be a lighter meal then. The American Sunnah <laughs> is you rush, you rush through breakfast with your briefcase in one hand and a cup of coffee. <laughs> the American Sunnah is you take a brown bag with some sandwiches for lunch. And the American Sunnah is when you get back home in the evening from work and usually after dark. Then you will sit down and have a huge dinner and then sit down and watch TV. That's the American <laughs> And by the time 
<laughs> Your food is not digested. The Sunnah of Muhammad is Islamic much more sense. So you have a light meal, not a heavy meal. You have it early so it can digest. You go to sleep maybe an hour, an hour and a half after Salat al Isha. And if you follow the Sunnah and had a little sleep in the afternoon, between Suhar and Asr, and then you sleep an hour and two hours after Isha, you will automatically wake. You don't need any alarm. You will automatically wake 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning, fresh, fresh, yeah, no problems. And uh, naturally the first thing you have to do if you're a married man is to go in the kitchen and make a cup of coffee for your wife. <laughs> she won't drink the coffee unless I make it. <laughs> and then you have time. You have time for Salat to Tahajjud, you have time to recite the Quran, you have time for meditation. My bad luck at this age is I have over a hundred emails every day. <coughs> Sometimes from a fifteen year old or seventeen year old. Somebody in Sweden, seventeen year old. Uh, and I answer them all. Hoping that perhaps by answering this little funny and guiding them, that Allah might show kindness and forgive me my sins. You don't know when. So now, we're formally, I'll use this time in the mornings for meditation and thinking and writing my books and so on. The most important writing work I do at this time. I'm going to be answering emails now, since this email stuff started. But hopefully you would not be saddled with that. Dreams don't come during deep sleep. Dreams come during light sleep. And the first hours of your sleep, when you go to sleep, are deep sleep. And the last subsequent hours are light sleep. But th there is something in the universe which makes it difficult for you to get deep sleep after midnight. You get deep sleep only after Salat al Isha, <coughs> during the early hours of the night before the light goes on. So the longer you stay up watching TV and then go to sleep, the more the likelihood that you will not get deep sleep. And when you are robbed of deep sleep, then your light sleep will not have dreams in it. Finally, when you're going to sleep, you can raise your hands and make dua. As Abdullah ibn Umar was advised to, Oh Allah, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Oh Allah, if you see any good in me, kindly show me a good treat. So, let us end 